Okay, well, I used to know Tony fairly well. We used to see him around town all the time. He's always like fantastically infuriating, but totally lovable. I don't, my favourite saying about Tony is that he was a twat, but he was our twat. And anybody else ever insulted him used to get really annoyed about it. And you, you kind of stick up for him all day because people be slagging him off in London or somewhere. Then you bump into him in the street and end up having a two-hour argument about about some utterly musical minutia or something. It was, it was totally ridiculous. But I think we're all kind of similar people. We're, I think we were all twats, really. So it's like a collision of twats in the streets of Manchester, which is how it should be with music, because there's nothing worse than nowadays when everything's consensus, really boring. The, the greatest thing about Tony was, even if he was completely wrong, which he was on some things, he was totally certain, 100% certain, and that certainty just died out in music. His enthusiasm was amazing, and he had, he had a heart of gold, which is, the, which is what, the one thing he would never want anyone to know about him at all, because he liked the idea that people found him really abrasive and really in your face. But we all knew that he was actually like a, a totally lovable kind of person as well. His energy was, was insane, and he also put people together, which was great about him as well. He joined people up, which is really important. And it's, it, in, a, in a city where people, would, on a creative people, would be all separate and disparate communities, he brought that together, and that, that was a really key thing. His enthusiasm powered Factory, powered the Hacienda, powered the whole music scene at that, that time as well. So even right at the very end, the last time I seen him, he was walking through Castlefield with a walking stick. And it's it about four weeks before he died. And I bumped into him. And you, you, you felt really tempted to go, how are you? How's it going? Put an arm around him. But you knew that would be the last thing he wanted. He didn't want any sympathy at all because he was, because he was, he was like the rest of us, a proper northerner. We're not soft like that. And um, so, so I tried really hard not to have an argument with him. But we ended up having an argument about the casino in Blackpool. And I said, it should be in Blackpool. And we had this argument for about 20 minutes. And then he said, wait a minute, we're agreeing with each other because he said it should have been in Blackpool as well because he really liked Blackpool. So, so that was just typical. I remember when I said have arguments with him. It's not having, like having an argument with somebody you hate. It's, it's like having an argument with somebody you love. And I think that's important. And I miss those debates and I miss those arguments and I, cause, because he was very intelligent and, he was in, and very intellectual. And he brought that into the arguments and it pushed you. And that was really important as well. I think all the greatest managers and all the greatest musical figures are people who push people to the brink. You see that in all the classic punk rock managers. They weren't just people like nowadays who just do the accounts and hand them in or something or, or just, you know, just, just speak to the right people. These are people actually confronted, confrontational people, dangerous people. He's like that through his whole career. And that's what we all really liked about him. That sense of free song, that sense of danger, that's, that sense of pretentiousness that he had as well, which is really fantastic. It made music into, into intellectual debates, whereas now it's just been boiled down to, I hate this, I hate that. I always think about this with Twitter. I think Twitter would have been impossible for someone like Tony. There's only 140 characters, but he would have just been on there all day causing arguments with people endlessly. And that's what I like, and that's what I really liked about him. And since the day he died, I've missed him every single day going around town. It's, just, it's weird, because it was just like this figure had been around all my life since I was a teenager watching on TV. And then and you kind of got used to him being there, and suddenly he wasn't there anymore. And I think the city kind of misses him as well. And I think it's, to build statues to him is pointless, but, the, but we have to keep the memory alive in different kind of ways. You know, Tony was not a statue person because, because he was a, a brilliant contradiction as well. On one level, he's very conventional, but at the other level, he was, he was an anarchist. And that's, that's what I like as well. All the greatest people are totally contradictory characters. So God bless you, Tony, wherever you are.